Absolutely. So she's asking about loose leash walking and pet dog training, right? And so loose leash walking is a knowable behavior because you have a leash. And so the black and white part of that is the leash going tight, right? When people try to use it for position stuff, now that's a problem. Somebody that says, pet dog trainers that say, I want my dog to heal around here. Like, I don't care about this kind of healing, but that's fine. That's too far. That's no good. Your dog can't know around here, right? But my dog can know when the leash is tight. They can feel it, right? So what I do is I teach that behavior. So after I've done leash pressure to the dog, right, I walk, and when the dog, I'm walking, when the leash goes tight, I give a cue, easy, or whatever you want to say, walk, I stop, I make the dog back up with the prong collar or my training collar. They know how to back up already from my leash pressure. I make them back up, I drop slack in the leash, and I start walking again, right? And then when the leash goes tight, I say easy, I stop, I move you back, right? I drop slack in the leash, and we walk again, right? And I do that repeatedly. Pretty quickly, I'm walking, the dog, the leash starts to go tight, I say easy, and the dog backs off on their own, right? They're telling me they're beginning to understand the easy cue, right? Easy means you're pulling, back off, don't pull, right? And they're showing me they're responding. I use a cue because I want the dog to have the chance to avoid the pressure coming up that's gonna come up in a bit here, right? And so if I say easy and you back off on your own, I don't need to punish you, you responded, right? And then, if they, after I've, they're shown fluency, if I say easy and they don't, they get a correction, right? E low level e-collar stim works really well for this too. Like, so the dog leash goes tight, once the dog understands this, I turn on low level stimulation, easy, back them up, shut it off, and then we walk again. And then as the dog starts to pull, you can nick the dog or remind them easy if they back off on their own, and you have it and then the dogs will keep the leash loose. And, they'll, and the leash tells them when it starts to go tight, they go, oh yeah, I can't pull. And that's a knowable thing for the dog, right? Because they can feel it, and it's a clear criteria. The problem is lots of people say, there's pet dog healing. Or stay kind of with me, right? The people that teach the Cesar Milan style dog walking stuff where the dogs walk behind you, that's kind of knowable, right? Don't pass my body. Stay behind me. The dog can see you, so they can't pass your body. Right? They're not going to have an exact position, but you can say, don't pass this, and you can make that a clear criteria if you wanted. Right? Or you can stay, you can walk, but you just can't pass the line of my body. And that's a knowable criteria as well. And so people that, people, they teach, you can see the dogs, they're pressured, right? No dog that walks behind like that is happy, right? Like, you can watch their demeanor. Every dog that walks that way is like, right? They know what they can't pass you. It's not going to be like, yay, hey, we're out for a walk, right, kind of thing. But don't get me started on walking. So, this, 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 <laughs> I, like, people, people are obsessed with their dog walking politely on a leash, right? And um, I'm very much, like, Dogs need to have times to be dogs. And so when I walk my personal dogs, um, I'm walking it for enrichment for them. I'm not walking it for exercise and that kind of stuff, right? So if I want my dog to be very much with me, they're, they're under command. They're with me. You're touching me right here, right? And I, have to, I teach them to contact, heal, basically touch me with their shoulder on the opposite side from my formal healing for my competition work when I want you to walk right with me. So I'll say, side, my dog flips over touches me on this side, and we're walking, and they'll stay right with me if I want to walk past somebody or if I want to walk through the farmer's market or something like that. You stay right with me. It's a very clear, noble, formal behavior. The rest of the time when I want to walk, I want you. You can sniff. You can pee. You can look around. That's what I walk you for. Like, I'm not walking you for exercise. I can't exercise a mountain while I'm taking it for a walk. I'd be a freaking ultra, ultra marathon walker, right? Like, I take it out because, hey, let's walk around, check stuff out, pee on stuff, look around. So I usually have a slightly longer leash, and I let them dive in the bushes and stuff like that. Go ahead, sniff over there. 
no, don't eat the dead raccoon, let's go, come on, that kind of thing. Like, and it's basically like, I want them to have some freedom to be loose and look around. It's, to me, it's an enrich, enrichment activity for them, right? And a pet dog walking along next to you like this, but that's the only place that pet dog owners, trainers can get pet dog owners to actually be structured with their dogs. And so everybody puts a ton of emphasis on that because the, they're too permissive everywhere else. They don't have any structure in their life. No structure for their dogs around the house, no structure in those places. They haven't made rules and followed through. So here's the one place I have. You've got to take your dog out for a walk every day. All right, let's make this structured, right? And it makes them happy because their dog doesn't dragging them down the street and pulling them into the bushes and stuff like that. But that's not the place I choose to have structure with my dogs. They have plenty of structure in their life. And so I get asked questions about loose leash walking all the time. And I, I, I know we, of course, know how to do it. It's not a super complicated thing. You have to be consistent. You want to have set clear criteria as much as possible. It's just, it's the least interesting dog training thing there is. And it's the one that everybody cares about. So it, once you get kind of into dog training, you're like, really? Loose leash walking, that's what you care about most. So look at all the crap these guys can do. Why don't you come on, get on board? It's fun, right? <laughs> like, so anyway, that's a, no more diatribes on loose leash walking. But anyway, yeah, uh, I wind up uh, teaching it as a formal behavior, and there's much more pressure there, for sure. Like, and you'll need pressure with your clients' dogs, and you'll have to increase the pressure, because they're not going to maintain it as well as you would. Like, a dog trainer's watching. It goes loose. Their timing's very good. Like, easy. Don't pull, like, and they're doing, the, your pet dog client's gonna let the dog pull for five feet and then get tired of it and then correct them and all that stuff. They're gonna be inconsistent. So you need to make some stronger avoidance to pulling for them because they won't follow through, right? They're not trained to be dog trainers. Their timing's gonna be bad. They're gonna be inconsistent. They're gonna be talking to their friends while they're walking and they're not gonna be paying attention. And then finally, when it gets onerous, then they're gonna reinforce it. And so most trainers that I know that are good at that put quite a bit of pressure there so that the dogs, it carries over. The dog's like, yeah, pulling on a leash is really bad for me. So then it sticks longer with their clients uh, and it won't erode as fast. And, because they're unlikely to maintain it as well as, as we would, hopefully, right?